Katie Tricaski, constitutional law attorney and former federal prosecutor, uh, joins me now. Uh, let's talk about the appeal process first. I mean, first of all, this amount of money is insane. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's astronomical. It's half a billion dollars. So it's no wonder why it's going to take some time to secure a bond for almost a half a billion dollars. And the timing in all of this seems uh, very, let's just say, political, if you will. He's running for president. And who has uh, three days to come up with $500, bi $500 million? Who, who has that kind of money? Not even Trump. Well, it's it's completely unprecedented. And the good thing is that I think that the Trump team has a very strong argument for the appellate court to stay the execution of this judgment, essentially to accept either a lesser bond or to not require any bond at all, because there's a very clear law in New York that allows for the court to consider all relevant factors, including the merits of a potential appeal, which here there's a significant argument that this appeal would be meritorious, and also to consider the personal hardships of the party that's requesting that. So I do believe that the court has a lot of law on its side to grant this execution or the stay of the execution. And so, and I wouldn't anticipate a response from them even today yet because this appeal de deadline is approaching mm -hmm. and it will cut off his right to appeal this case altogether if that bond is not posted. The, pres the former president and many others have speculated that this is politically motivated. I mean, if, if Letitia James actually goes after his assets, okay, and she starts seizing real estate, such as the golf course, uh, you know, uh, an estate in, in uh, north of New York City. Uh, if, he's, if she starts doing that in, the, in, let's say, that the motivation is political, could this not backfire? Because if the, if the motivation is essentially to try to drive Trump supporters away, it's going to do the exact opposite. We've seen that time and time again. Every time you come after Trump, people just come and they rise up and they back him even further. So uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it seems political. I mean, does, is this a typical time span to have to come up with this kind of money? Or does this seem like a very small window of time? Well, the time span is typical because the appellate court has certain deadlines in order to pursue an appeal. Mm -hmm. And in order to do so, you have to post a bond. The problem here is the amount of money, which is obviously political. Everybody can tell that there's no logical ties between the amounts that were adjudged against Trump and the Trump organization to anything that happened. There was no fraud victims here. There was no complaining parties. So certainly that aspect of it is entirely political. But again, I do think that the Trump side has a very strong argument argument that the appellate court should step in and allow the appeal to proceed without allowing Letitia James to begin ceasing those assets, which she would be able to do if he's not pursuing this appeal. That essentially is the execution of that judgment. Right. But unfortunately for the Trump camp, God only knows how long that's going to take. The appellate court does not move that quickly. So he's going to have to come up with the money or she's most likely going to start seizing assets. I got to move on to something else. Republican lawmakers are saying that a new whistleblower is claiming that the CIA actually blocked federal investigators from interviewing a key Hunter Biden associate. I wonder why. Kevin Morris joined Hunter in one of his Capitol Hill stunts where he crashed a House hearing on Hunter's failure to comply with a subpoena. Now the wealthy Hollywoody attorney has also paid some of Hunter's legal fees. Conflict of interest there? Here is House Judiciary Chair Jim Jordan. We don't know if he's an asset. We don't know if he's regularly talking with someone who is being surveilled. This is not just anybody. This is Kevin Morris, the guy who has loaned and or bought millions of dollars uh, for Hunter Biden, loaned him like $6 million, bought like, I think, a million dollars in artwork. There are so many things wrong with this investigation. And that's why Chairman Comer and I have sent the letter uh, finding out, you know, why couldn't they talk to the guy? Uh, meantime, there are questions about why Speaking of why, the FBI didn't want to hear from Tony Bobulinski. Uh, he's the key witness, if you recall, in the GOP impeachment inquiry to President Biden. And yesterday, House Republicans sued two, not one, but two Justice Department officials who happen to work on the Hunter tax investigation. No coincidence here. The panel says to uncover all the facts, the committee requires testimony from two current or former tax division attorneys who have firsthand knowledge of the irregularities in DOJ's investigation that appear to have benefited Hunter Biden. Um, it is no surprise that Hunter Biden's father is the president of the United States, because if he was not, these interviews would have con been conducted. Would you agree? Absolutely. This is incredibly troubling. And I think there's significant questions that if what this whistleblower is saying is true, 
what information does Mr. Morris have and why is he being prevented from interviews by law enforcement agents? If we can't trust the highest levels of law enforcement in this country, then we really are in a true deep state situation here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Katie Trachowski, thank you very much for talking to us. We appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.